What's going on, everybody? It's Nick Costco with On3 Sports, and wrestling season's over. It's a sad day. Of course, you're looking at this Monday after the NCAA tournament in Kansas City. It's kind of like getting off a high, so to speak. So when you look at three days of just intense wrestling, then you have to have a day to reflect, and then you go into the new work week. It's just, oh, it stinks. Because wrestling season's over. Of course, there's Olympic trials coming up for all you wrestling fans. That'll be in April. And, of course, we have the Summer Olympic Games this year as well. Then, if, you know, we'll wait. We'll, we'll get through football season. Then we'll get to the next NCAA wrestling season. But overall, it was a wild affair in Kansas City. It was a great host city. I do have to say so myself. I just got back yesterday, long travel day, a couple connecting flights early in the morning. But overall, Kansas City was great to us in the media. Hospitality was pretty good. Having the hotel literally a, a block from the arena, right, right next to the arena, essentially. That was awesome. So great access, uh, great downtown scene. In Kansas City, I'm I, I'm on the bandwagon of saying Kansas City should host NCAA's uh, quite a bit. And they should be in the regular rotation along with the ones like St. Louis and Cleveland and so on and so forth. So uh, a lot to get into, of course, when it comes to this tournament. I'm not necessarily going to go uh, weight by weight right here. Just looking at the uh, big storylines that really stood out to me when it came to the NCAA tournament this year. So uh, let's start with, of course, you really can't start. A tournament recap without mentioning Penn State first. They broke the team scoring record, 172 and a half points. That was the previous record was was 170. They broke the uh, margin, uh, the winning margin record as well. They won by over by 100 points. I mean, it's, it's it's insane. Cornell second place, and I'll get into him in a little bit. Cornell had a great tournament. They finished second, took second place to the NCAA tournament based on the team scoring, and they were 100 points behind Penn State. Penn State had eight All Americans, six finalists, four champions. Those champions. Uh, Levi Haynes, Carter Storacci, Aaron Brooks, and Greg Kirkfleet. And then you look at Star, uh, Storacci and Brooks, four-time champions. They made history. You kind of knew it was coming. I'll get into Storacci. You know, his situation is a little bit different. Um, but Brooks, it just to me, it just felt inevitable that he was going to get that fourth title this year. I picked him before the tournament as well. He was dominant the entire time, really controlled that final against Trent Hidley of NC State, won 5 nothing. I believe it was the final score. Didn't allow him to score, got the lone takedown, just controlled center that entire match, would not let Hidley get to him at all. It was Hidley's only loss of the year, and just, you know, you feel bad for Hidley because you want, you know, I think a lot of general wrestling fans wanted to see a guy like that win a title. would have been awesome to see for sure, but unfortunately he was just in the presence of an all-time great and, you know, one of the greatest wrestlers we've ever seen at the college level in Aaron Brooks. It just seems like, Penn State has all those guys as well when you include uh, Starachi into that mix. I know there was a lot of uh, Twitter chatter from uh, Jordan Burroughs who spearheaded, spearheaded a conversation of like who's on Penn State's Mount Rushmore. And a lot of guys, you know, it, it's hard to say, even with recency bias, it's hard to not put Starachi and Brooks on, on that Mount Rushmore of college wrestlers to go through the Penn State program, both four-timers. They were the sixth and seventh guys to ever do it in the history of the sport, and they did it in the same year in the same singlet. So Brooks, to me, not much else to say other than the fact that he's been one of the greats for a long time. He was absolutely dominant, ran through his weight class, you know, 184 for three uh, three times, and obviously 197 this year. Starachi, though, and I'll get into more about 174, which was just absolutely bonkers. He was a ninth seed. Everyone knows he medically defaulted out of the Big Ten tournament, so he was penalized. He would have been the number one seed, but... You knew he wasn't fully healthy because he had the huge leg brace. Now, he didn't disclose what his exact injury is. I know there's been speculation about it was a torn ACL. It could have been a different type of leg injury, but he never confirmed what it was. He gave all the credit in the world to his trainer. He even raised his trainer's hand right after he won the national title on Saturday night, which was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, Starachi, uh basically he did not confirm nor deny if he was going to come back for a fifth year, which he is eligible for. He's immediately tra- changing his focus to – Olympic trials now, and he he was he's going to give it a run. Even in his post match presser, he said uh, there was contemplation that he was actually going to skip out on NCAA's just to get healthier for the Olympic trials, trying to make it run for the Olympic team. But I am glad to see that he did go for that fourth title this year and ultimately win that fourth title, which is a tremendous feat doing it with basically one leg. And he was just stout in the semis and the finals in particular. Uh, also the quarterfinals as well when he beats uh, a national champion in Makai Lewis. And who was the number one seed? And I give Lewis a lot of credit for wrestling back. He took fourth. Uh, he fell to Shane Griffith. And I'll get into Griffith later in this recap as well from Michigan. He was just awesome. He dealt with a lot of injuries as well. You saw that semifinal with Starachi and Griffith. It's like, all right, who's more banged up? Who's going to 
ended up taking it in the end, and Sirachi ended up taking it in the end. Very close margins. He beat a standout freshman in Rocco Welsh in the finals. The Ohio State freshman was unbelievable all year. I loved watching him this year. One of the more physically aggressive types of wrestlers I've I've seen at that young of an age coming into the college scene in Rocco Welsh. So he was awesome, but Sirachi controlled center the entire time. One, two, nothing, did what he had to do, and you know he earned it. So I, I all the props in the world to Sirachi. He's one of the all-time greats. I'm excited to see how much healthier he can get for Olympic trials because, again, if it is as speculated, if it was a torn ACL, that does require surgery at some point. We've seen guys win titles with no ACLs, a la Spencer Lee of Iowa. So Sirachi's probably going to go full rehab, full go uh, in some sort of combination ahead of April. I'm excited to see how he performs on the freestyle level, and I, I think he had a handshake with uh, Jordan Burroughs uh, after the match as well, after he won the finals. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be in the same weight class, but Sirachi said he's going to go to 74 kilos, or that's his plan for the Olympic trials. So when you look at uh, them shaking hands, he says, congratulations, uh, but you better be ready. I That that, that was a reported word of what Burrow said to Starachi. So that was really awesome. But Penn State to me, man, just, you know, Kale Sanderson just does it again. Another national title as a team, four champs, six finalists, eight All-Americans. Tyler Kasek, sh shout out to him as well. Lost in the first round, true freshman at 149, won seven in a row, including beating number one seed Ridge Lovett in the consolation semis. That dude was on an absolute tear on the backside, finished his third. A guy who was supposed to be a red shirt this year. He was supposed to be behind Shane Van Ness, who got hurt earlier in the year, was knocked out for the season. Case that comes in. Many people thought, okay, yeah, NCAA qualifier might have a chance to get to the blood round, maybe all American. He just went on an absolute tear. And it was just, it was absolutely unbelievable to watch uh, him make that run to the third place match. And of course, uh, finish in third, finish the season with a win, seven straight wins. Unbelievable performance against uh, for uh, Penn State. Again, uh, not much else to say other than the fact that they always get up for March. They're going to be the favorites once again when the tournament goes to Philadelphia next year. They're going to have an even bigger Penn State contingent just making the drive over to the Wells Fargo Center in 2025. So I, I, I'm interested to see uh, who comes back. Uh, I know Brooks is done. Starachi has the option to come back. He might not come back. It, it seems like he wins that fourth title, then there's not much else left to prove other than winning a fifth national title, which would be history he'd be the only one that would be able to do it at this point and barring some of something unforeseen in the future when it comes to these guys eligibility but you know do that COVID year he can win a fifth national title if he chooses to come back but he already said doesn't like school loves wrestling doesn't like school at this point so I would not expect him to come back I mean, Kirk Lee was awesome uh winning his national title so there's a lot of questions about who's going to come back uh you look at Bo Bartlett 141 lost the national title to Jesse Mendez of Ohio State I picked Bartlett to get his payback he was more aggressive in that final. Mendez won on a counterattack, wild scramble at the end. Jesse Mendez, absolute dog for the Buckeyes. Bartlett, was, there was speculation that he would not come back next year, but it seems like it might be going in the other direction. He might come back for 2025. So, again, remains to be seen, but Penn State's going to be the dominant force once again next season as well. Um, the other big thing that I loved and among the finals that I watched when I was Matt's side or you know on the floor on Saturday night, David Carr, got to give it to him. He was unbelievable. David Carr beating rival Keegan O'Toole in the semifinals at 165. I picked O'Toole going into the tournament. I figured he would win his third national title. He had jump levels. He had won two in a row against David Carr, including the Big 12 finals two weeks ago. And Carr just managed to just pour it on late in that match. People say he broke O'Toole. Maybe you could look at it that way, but he just wanted a tiny bit more. Got that late takedown to go ahead. It was an unbelievable celebration, jumping into his coach's arms, the celebration in the tunnel, crazy stuff from David Carr. And then he beats Mitchell Messenbrink for uh, Penn State, the redshirt freshman who also had an unbelievable run this year, undefeated all year, got to the finals. Now Carr had two takedowns. I think he was up 7-2 to two at one point, and then Messenbrink started pouring it on, started battling back. There were stall calls, questionable or not. Carr was trying to circle back inside. He mentioned, you know, he tried to do, uh, I believe I believe he was uh, referring to uh, Jordan Burroughs or he was referencing Joe, uh, Jordan Burroughs. I believe that's what he said in the post-match presser about, you know, how he, he was like just trying to show off some finesse and try to basically juke his way back in and try to stay active on his feet that way, almost in a boxing-like fashion. But, you know, he he hung on for the win. He had the riding time. He was trying to mat return Messerbrink, I believe it was like five or six times, and Messerbrink would just not go down. But an un unbelievable performance from David Carr, second national title. He went, he won in uh, 2021 at 157, then finished third, then finished second when he went up to 65 last year, lost to O'Toole, and then he comes back and wins it this year. 
that's that, 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 that's all time stuff. He's one of the greatest wrestlers to come out of that program. Uh, I know people were, I think, were busting his chops that he couldn't equal his father's three national titles, but uh, two national titles, three time finals, and a four time All American uh, in, in in those tournaments. I mean, you you cannot uh, write almost a better storybook ending to his career, going from first, and then he has the trials and tribulations running into an all-time rival in Keegan O'Toole. Then just all, all of a sudden, he manages to beat him in the end in that fifth match they, they faced him against in the semifinals, and he beats an all-star freshman in Mitchell, in Mitchell Messenbrink. A tremendous performance from David Carr. Uh, Love watching him. Going to miss him in the college scene. It was just a great, great tournament from the Cyclone. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So I mentioned Cornell before. Uh, what a performance by them. I, they, they got a champion in Vito Arugia finishing second in the team race. And, you know, the, the biggest takeaway I have from uh, Cornell is, the you know, team score aside with it, you know, you lose by 100 to Penn State. I mean, they, they were, they were going to push that uh, pace anyway, no matter who finished second. Uh, but Cornell getting Vito uh, on top of the podium, once again, winning his second straight national title. So there's two things with that 133 final right now. Vito Arugia absolutely earned it. He was uh, punished a little bit with the sixth seed because he had that second loss to Lehigh's Ryan Crookham in the EI, EIWA finals. But he managed to wrestle through all, all the uh, adversity right there. He seemed to be banged up earlier in the year. And he even said after his quarterfinal match, I remember this said on, on Friday morning when I talked to him, he goes, you know, I you, you look at my performances against a guy like Ryan Crookham in the past – you know, I didn't want to do a disservice to him in saying that, that he he owned me because I wasn't fully healthy. And then he turned it on in the semifinals. And that's nothing against Crookham, who I think is going to be a national title contender over the next couple of years for Lehigh as well. But when Vito was a little bit healthier on Friday night, able to turn it on, he took care of Crookham. And then in the finals against Dayton Fix, which I'll get to him in a second, he was a, he just he just did more. You know, he attacked he attacked more and amid the controversies of all the stall uh, potential stalls, the reviews. He did enough, and Vito proved why he's been the man at 133 over the past couple of years. You know, beating Roman Bravo Young last year, and then now beating Dayton Fix this year. It was a tremendous performance from Vito, two-time champ. All the credit in the world to him. He was awesome to watch. I didn't think he was going to win this title this time around. I didn't. I, I didn't know his. I didn't know his health. I figured he'd be an All American again. I had him finishing fourth in this tournament, but you know, it's very, it's very hard to beat somebody three times. I thought Crookham actually could do it against Vito, but. He proved me wrong, and Vito just, you know, and, and he's awesome. Right after he won the national title, he just he gives a very cheery hi to the media. You know, he Vito was just so, so awesome to watch, and he's another guy I'm going to miss, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with the uh, Olympic trials as well. So, you know, he, he's a you know, war, you know world champion for a reason, two-time champion for uh, in college for a reason. He's going to be awesome to watch, so looking forward to watching Vito in the Olympic trials as well. But on the flip side, Dayton Fix, who also is going to focus on the Olympic trials. Now being a guy who's a world silver medalist, a four time runner up and a fourth place finisher. He's a five time all American absolute legend at Oklahoma state. Now I know people don't like his wrestling style necessarily because he doesn't score a lot, especially when it comes to these big matches at NCAAs that we've seen in the big spotlight when it comes to Dayton fix, but he was, a, he was an awesome wrestler. He really was. I, I mean, I, I get there are heels in the sport and the booing was there. Now fans have the right to boo. I didn't necessarily like it. I, you know, you know why they're booing. They're booing because usually in a lot of these big matches, you know, Fix is going to end up being part of something that causes a lot of reviews, a lot of controversy, a lot of questions, stalling, whatever the case may be. But he earned his way to the finals, regardless if you like his style or not. He was very close to winning this title again, but he ran into some all-time greats. He lost to Nick Suriano, lost to RBY twice, and then he lost to Vito. And he lost to Vito last year as well uh, before the final. So there really is no shame in the guys that he's lost to. It's just that you know it, it stinks that he's going to go down as a guy who just could not win the gold at this level. But he should be remembered for a, being a five-time All-American, a four-time runner-up. You know, it's hard enough to win a national title, but the fact that he got to the national title. Uh, round you know he got to the finals four times that's impressive in itself and he's going to go down as an all-time great he'll be a legend in Oklahoma State forever regardless if he won a national title or not but uh, hats off to fix and again he's going to be you know he'll, it, it's going to be a doozy at that weight at the Olympic trials so and he immediately switches focus to the Olympic trials right after he, uh, he lost and credit credit to him for speaking to the media to a big media contingent after his loss to veto it was about I don't know it, they, they wrestled at 133 then around the 140 yeah, maybe it was late. It was later in the evening. I think it was after 174, maybe, maybe towards the end of the night. I forget when, but he eventually came back out and spoke to the media. And he was very gracious, even in defeat, very humble kid, really, really good dude. Despite the fact that what his 
persona of wrestling and the and the you know what the label he gets uh, from the fans, I would say, or at least where the, the label he gets on social media. But he was awesome to watch. Just you know, again, four time finals couldn't get it done. But again, hats off to him being a five time All American. One forty nine really stood out to me as well. Caleb Henson. I didn't see this one coming. I figured he'd be an All American, but I had Ridge Lovett winning this weight over Austin Gomez once again. And Caleb Henson won one nothing over Lovett in that semifinal match. Uh, it was zero zero, no riding time. Lovett took top, and I think it was the most curious decision of the tournament. You know, Lovett was confident that he could uh, ride Henson, maybe get a turn there. You know, in, in, at the very least, if he's up uh, on riding time, and he eventually gives up, gives up an escape. It's one one, then you go to overtime. But Henson made him pay, got the escape, one one nothing, and then against the high flyer in Austin Gomez, where I thought at that point Gomez was going to win the finals because he was taking on Henson. Henson said, all right, even though I gave up the first takedown, let's go back to our back. And he managed to uh, catch Gomez a couple times in that match, winning that one 15-7, to high flying, high scoring affair. Love to see it. And for the young buck and Caleb Henson, you know, he's going to be around for a little while now, so he'll be in the, in the conversation over the next couple of years. So big, big props to him. Virginia Tech, it's another national champion. They were searching for one after Makai Lewis, who – Obviously, fell short again this year, finishing in fourth and one four, uh, 174. But Caleb Henson, awesome to watch, really good dude. I think he dropped an F bomb on ESPN after he uh, uh, won his national title. But of course, you know, it's all pure emotion. It was awesome to watch. He's a he's a really really great wrestler. Um, 125, folks. Jeez, what can we say about 125? 125 was nuts. Couldn't predict it. I had this one totally wrong. I had Braden Davis winning the finals. He didn't even AA this year for Penn State as a true freshman, which, you know, nothing, nothing to really scoff at right there. You know, it happens, and it was a wild weight class. And But Davis, you know, he, he didn't get uh, past – did not get uh, onto the podium. Richie Figueroa wins this way for Arizona State, beats Iowa's Drake Ayala. And I think once Ayala was uh, a little bit more consistent in getting to the finals and, he, and the way he was wrestling, I think he was the popular pick at that point to beat Figueroa. But Figueroa – Got it done. Late takedown. No, there were some stall issues in that in that match as well. But Richie Figs comes out on top in a wild uh, minefield of a weight class and one that could be very random again next year as well. But Figs, he's going to go into the offseason as a champion. Looking forward to seeing if he can continue that trajectory uh, throughout his career. Um, you know, he was undefeated last year, but didn't compete in the postseason. Uh, then he, he go, I think he had five losses this year, sixteen and five or something like that. And you know, he ends up winning the national title. You know, good on him, Arizona State. Uh, really got him going, and you know he's going to be a force to be reckoned with as well over the next couple of years. Um, I mentioned 141 already uh, with Bartlett, but I got to give more of a shout out to uh, Jesse Mendez as well as some of these other champions that uh, really stood out to me as well. Uh, Mendez, really awesome. You know, we got that late takedown against Bartlett in the Big Ten Finals, where he was the aggressor in the match. And then it was, as I mentioned before, it was the reverse this time. So you look at Jesse Mendez. True freshman last year, true sophomore this year. Not that I didn't think he could win the national title. I just thought Bartlett would have that extra edge. That you know, it's the Penn State edge, and it's hard to say that you know that 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 be that, that's not a hot take. Penn State always has that extra edge in March, and but Mendez got it done, ran through the bracket, and then uh, Bartlett initiates a great takedown, or it looks like he's going to finish it off. He came around, then Mendez forces the scramble, rolls through, ends up on top. And with mere seconds left, he's on top four to one, and he celebrates. I know there, there was a review right at the end of the match, but everyone kind of knew it was over there. So Mendez, awesome, 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 gonna be. I mean, he, he's. I mean, again, you you, you always kind of have to say that once you win one, that you know these guys have a chance to repeat or win another one uh, down the line as well. But with two years left, I mean, this, this kid's gonna have a chance to be a three timer when it's all said and done. He's a tremendous lightweight for Ohio State, which had a very young team this year two finalists, and they're going to have other guys that are going to be in the running for national titles for years to come. So we're talking about Ohio State as a uh, another, as a trophy team once again, maybe a threat to Penn State down the line. But, you know, you could always say that, and then Penn State wins by 50 to 70 points anyway. So uh, b- big-time stuff from Mendez and Bartlett, very gracious in defeat as well, very humble guy, smiling the entire time. Got to love it. You know, he's he, he's awesome, awesome for the sport. Uh, other guys, I, I mentioned how Penn State had the four champions. Uh, Levi Haynes controlled that one against Jacory Teamer of Arizona State as well. Levi Haynes, awesome stuff. Had him in the preseason winning the entire thing. He did it wire to wire. 
He was awesome all season long. Uh, Parker Keckheising, I'll give a shout out to him from Northern Iowa winning the 184 pound title. He's got one more year, so we could see him back winning another one in 25 as well. But Keckheising ran to some all timers, including Aaron Brooks. Uh, the other year as well. So when you look at what he was able to do at 184 this year, he dominated. I believe he ended the season with a 90% bonus rate, and I'm pretty sure, if memory, if memory serves, he did not give up. Uh, he didn't have anything less than a bonus point decision throughout the entire tournament. Let's look at it right now. Yeah, major, tech, tech, major. That's what that's what Parker Keckeisen did in <laughs> in this tournament. It was actually unbelievable. Uh, 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 and a major of the finals. So there you go. It was five matches. So he had... Three majors and two techs, and he majored Dustin Plot, who he's beaten all season long from Oklahoma State. And Plot was great as the three seed, making the run uh, on the uh, bottom side of the bracket. Uh, he beat Bernie Truax in the quarters, and I, then uh, the Big Ten champion Isaiah Salazar of Minnesota uh, in the semifinals as well. And he you know, he majored his way too. Plot went tech major, 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 and then he got majored by Keck Eisen. Keck Eisen, different level this year. Uh, if I really, if, if I had a Hodge vote, I would probably, I would probably vote for him. I, I would vote for Keck Eisen. Just uh, you know, it's. I'm not going to say it's Penn State bias. You know, a, a guy like Aaron Brooks, who is more than deserving, will probably get it. But I got I got to imagine Keck guys that should get a lot of love for the Hodge this year. I thought he should win OW, to be honest with you, because they were, all of his matches, they were just they weren't even close. I mean, I, I had a hard time believing that he was going to lose at all. You know, he finished the season undefeated, 31-0. and And I had him winning before the tournament started. And what I saw all weekend just wasn't surprised. By, I wasn't surprised by anything. He just absolutely floored the field. So Parker Keck Eisen, absolutely dominant. And he's going to put on for the Panther train in 2025 as well. And I think I saw on Twitter uh, that there were questions of, does he plan to go up to 197 for his final year and year? And he already tweeted back. Uh, no. So I would imagine uh, the 184 pound weight class will go through Parker Keck Eisen in 2025 as well. All right. So that, that does it for like, the guys who won and the ones that really stood out in the dominance factor of uh, some of the small schools that I liked uh, this weekend. Some of the big storylines from NCAA's uh, Little Rock was awesome. Neil Erisman won uh, the tournament coach of the year, much deserved. Two All Americans. That program is only five years old in Division One. Erisman has been awesome. He, you know, he talked to the media on Wednesday as part of the uh, pre-tournament press conference. He was uh, he was awesome, man. He was awesome, awesome, awesome. Just a really humble guy. You know, he's building the program the right way. Nasir Bailey, Stephen Little. At 133 and 197, fourth and seventh, respectively, in their weight classes. This program's building, man. And, you know, people could say it's Arkansas. It's out in the, it's out in the middle of nowhere, and they're a Pac-12 program. And who knows what the Pac-12 uh, becomes over the next couple of years? I think they had, he said they had a one-year waiver. The conference in wrestling does for next year, but again, obviously Stanford's going to the ACC, so the conference does get a little smaller. So it remains to be seen what the Pac-12 in wrestling becomes if it still has that branding, or these teams just group up and merge with a different conference and become like a West Coast staple of a conference. And you, know, you, you could hypothetically say maybe they all just eventually move to the Big 12, then you have like a Big 12 West Coast contingent, but you never know because obviously you have the California schools out there as well. But he was he, he, he much deserved uh, much deserved Coach of the Year, Neil Aerosmith. So Little Rock, big shout-out to them. Uh, uh, South Dakota State, Damian Hahn was awesome uh, getting this program up and ready for the tournament. For those three days, they had four All Americans South Dakota State. Now I had Tanner Sloan at 197. I believe I had him in the finals. Uh, I think I think that's what I had going into it. Let's take a look at these. This is actually my, these are actually my predictions right here from before the tournament. Uh, no, I take that back. Actually, I had uh, Trent Hiley. Obviously, I, I, toy toy just blanked on that. But I had Sloan finishing in third place. He took fourth, so right around where I thought. He was going to be but uh, Ben and Berge at 184, K DeVos of 174. That's who I had in the finals, by the way, um, losing to Starachi. And then uh, Tanner Jordan, 125. All those guys were All-Americans, four All-Americans this year for South Dakota State. That was absolutely awesome. Good tournament from the Jackrabbits. So um, as we wrap up here, a couple more things here on this NCAA recap. Of course, you know, you could talk about this stuff for about two hours, but um, – you know, don't, I don't want you know. I, I didn't want to go basically match by match. Uh, so we look at. I, I, oh yeah, I wanted to go back to 174. Shane Griffith, what a pleasure to watch his entire career. We know his story. Saved Stanford, won that national title in 2021, and now he comes to Michigan and he had, a, he had national title aspirations. Now he got hurt in the Big Ten in the Big Ten semifinals two weeks ago. He's wrestling all bruised and battered. He's got both his legs bandaged up, bandaged up and taped up. He got by. He ended up winning. 
and getting to the semifinals at one point. Uh, but he obviously ran into Carter Starace. He was down uh, 5 nothing, by the way, in the quarters to Jared Sima of uh, UNI. By the way, I think he was like a 28th seed. He was awesome, Jared Sima. What, what a way to make that run there. And he took uh, Griffith to the brink there. But he, what a comeback by Griffith in that quarterfinal match. Thing. And then um, then obviously Shane ends up uh, wrestling back for third place. Wrestles with Makai Lewis for the first time in their careers. Two New Jersey legends. Wins that one as well. Won, won that one four to nothing. Really controlled that match as well. So he goes out on top with a win. Non-national champion. But again, two-time fi- um, two time finalist. He, he actually lost. He's the one who lost to Keegan O'Toole. Uh, the first time around after winning the national title the year before. Um, good on him to finish his career. Tremendous, tremendous stuff. He's an absolute warrior. He looks like he's going to be done with the sport uh, as a competitor. Uh, he, you know, he deserves to do whatever he wants. Very smart dude. Uh, obviously, he has multiple Stanford degrees. He's a, is going to get a degree from Michigan. Um, he'll be very successful in what he does, uh, whatever he chooses to do in life. Love Shane Griffith, Jersey legend. And again, he, he put he put on a great show for Michigan in his final season. And then uh, uh, to, my, to my Rutgers guys, of course, um, you know, having covering them for uh, almost a decade now and all, and all season long, uh, Dylan Shaver and Yaroslav Slavakuski getting All-American laurels. That is uh, two All-Americans for Rutgers, eighth time in the last nine years for Scott Goodale to get to have uh, that accomplishment where they had at least two All-Americans in a tournament. Not the best tournament from Rutgers, but overall a solid showing. They had a third guy, John Poznanski, in the blood round. Shaver and Slavakuski finished seventh. So first time actually Rutgers had a... Uh, an undefeated record on that Saturday morning medal round as well. So good on the Scarlet Knights. They're going to have a lot of talent coming back, including Shaver and Slava Kuski. Uh, the only guy that's graduating that, that is definitely not back next year is Mitch Moore, who had a decent tournament, uh, fell a little short in the um, the match right before the blood round. So it was a very close call for Moore. But he obviously you know, qualified again for NCAAs. He had a great career as well. So uh, overall, good showing from Rutgers. And, you know, again, I'm, so, I'm sure the Scarlet Knights are going to have an even better showing uh, next year with all the talent coming back and the, and the uh, talent coming in as well. So uh, that'll do it for me for the NCAA tournament recap. It was another wild one in Kansas City. I'm looking forward to Philadelphia next year. I'm um, going to have some more content for On3 coming up this week when it comes to the wrestling stuff. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, Neil Arisman coming up later this week as well, actually getting his thoughts on the NCAA tournament for his guys in Little Rock and what the future holds for that program as well. So at, I'm Nick Costco signing off once again for On3 Sports. Follow me on Twitter, follow On3 on Twitter and all social media platforms as well. And check out the content on YouTube as well.